So I was recently watching some videos of some great business ideas in 2023 and I was quite interested with some of them claiming that you could potentially make up to thousand dollars a day. So it worked out for example for one business where you would do water blasting, cleaning rubbish bins which would take say 15 minutes long that if you charged thirty dollars then you could potentially make a thousand dollars and so over the weekend you could make two thousand dollars a week. So that's 15 minutes, four bins in an hour, that's $120 and then $120 multiplied by 8 to 9 hours. So is that really the case? Can you potentially make that kind of money working 8 to 9 hours on say your Saturday or your Sunday? And I think that in reality this is not realistic and so in this video I want to share a simple way that you can map out or you can think about a business before you actually start to invest capital because the truth is that once you invest capital into any business if that business doesn't do well that money is lost and you start back at the beginning where you were say a couple of months back. So when you're looking at a business like this, probably the first thing that you want to consider is what is the actual process involved? Is it simply just cleaning the bins or is there more to it? And so in this example, what I want to suggest is that there's actually five steps involved in a business like this where you're cleaning bins. First of all, you actually have to go to the site. So you have to travel from site A to site B where you actually take your equipment, your tools, your truck, whatever, and you go and you arrive there. And then once you arrive at that place, the next thing you would actually have to do is you'd have to prepare the equipment. So if you're, for example, cleaning the bins, then you have to actually find the bin. You have to put the bin in a place where it's allowed to be clean. It's a reasonable place to clean it. And then you actually have to set up your equipment. And then after that, then the 15 minute aspect of it may come up, which is the cleaning part, which is where you clean the bin. It may take you, say, 10 minutes. It could take 5 minutes, but it could easily take also 20 minutes, depending on how the dirty the bin really is. And then after that, then you would go ahead and actually dispose the waste that's been generated from the bin. Because when you clean the bin, you don't necessarily want to make another place dirty, so you'll have to clean that part as well. And then the last thing is that once you've cleaned the bin, you've cleaned the area, you actually have to pack up so you put your equipment away and then the cycle starts again where you arrive at another site and continue. So when we think about that, the question we should ask ourselves I think is, is that really going to take 15 minutes? And my answer to that is probably not. I think that it will probably take somewhere in the margin of say, uh, 20 to 40 minutes per bin. So even if you're cleaning two bins an hour, that can potentially halve the expectation of how much you can make in a day. So one of the aspects you might look into is the constraint of the equipment and transportation. So obviously you're going to be moving from site A to site B and if you're having heavy equipment to lug around then that can be an issue in itself. And there are some physical demands that are involved in a business like water blasting so you may not be able to maintain that level of productivity throughout the whole process of that 8 to 9 hours. Even if, for example, you use something like a water ba um, battery operated water blaster, you're relying on the battery performance to actually enable you to get through that 8 or 9 hours in a day. So if your battery performance or battery capacity is not that great, you kind of have an issue of, say, charging the battery from time to time, and that brings in another issue of, uh, of the fact that you actually have to carry more batteries around with you, or you simply have to have a charging point um, on your vehicle or at the site. So this is one of the constraints that could potentially be there if you decided to use lighter equipment as opposed to heavy equipment that could clean the job faster. The other thing that you can consider is, for example, if you're using lighter equipment, the water pressure may be less. Usually people only will call you if the bins are actually really dirty or reasonably dirty. In the scenario where they are really dirty, your slow, low pressure a uh, water blaster may not be pow powerful enough to actually clean away the dirt from that bin. So in that scenario, now you kind of have to work longer and harder than as, as originally anticipated. So there's some kind of gains and losses depending on the equipment you choose um, in terms of moving the equipment against actually the cleaning speed that you, you actually do the work.
The second thing is that and I've got here is customers. So for example, if you're starting this business, you might be finding that your customers are not sort of all on one locality. So they're not in one location. Uh, you may be traveling from say site A to site B and site B and site A may be 8 or 10 minutes apart, but it can also be easily 15 to 20 minutes apart. And this needs to be incorporated into the time that it takes uh, to do that overall process of one person's job. So this means that we have to consider that custard demand, so how much demand is there say per street, um, the cost of the service, so how much are people really willing to pay on that service, and um, the other thing is that for example if you're using this example of a cleaning a business where you clean bins, uh, you are relying on the people who collect the rubbish uh, to, to, to determine when you can actually clean the bins. For example, if uh, the bin is cleaned on Thursday, you most likely have to clean it that day itself or you have to clean it on the Friday. And the reason for that is because if, for example, the customer puts rubbish in their bin, then you have to kind of take that rubbish out before you can actually do the cleaning of that bin and so that's another factor that's involved so you kind of now have an issue where if you have five different customers and they have five different um, pickup days for their rubbish well you can't do all their rubbish on um, their their cleaning on the same day you need to align to the days that actually their their bin is being picked up so that's one factor in there. And then also it could be a question of when you are available. For example, if you're planning on doing this type of job as a side hustle, well then the question is that you've got say 9 to 5, your 9 to 5 job. So you're not going to be able to do it between those hours. You'll have to do it in the night time. So how practical would it be to actually go in the evenings and actually do some job like a water blasting job cleaning bins. And obviously if you're doing it on the weekends that's a story in itself. But here what I'm explaining is that um, your availability is going to be sort of factor, uh, factor and then also when the bins are being picked up is also another factor that you need to consider when this whole idea of a thousand dollars a day or how poten the potential earnings that you could make. Now here I've got a, another example which is that um, the competition aspect of it. So if there is a low barrier to entry for any type of business, the reality is that means anybody can do it. So a good example of this would be um, a delivery business where you're delivering food from say a customer, from a, from a, from a person who makes food to someone who consumes the food. So this doesn't generally doesn't require a lot of skill. You just need a driver's license, you need a vehicle, and you can do it. And so here, because everybody potentially can do it, that I think drives down the price and the value of that job. So the same thing applies to here, that if everybody can do this sort of bin cleaning business, there's nothing stopping your neighbor or somebody down the road from starting this type of business as well. And as soon as that happens, now you've got an issue of, say, price wars and or or other things where there's going to be sort of a split market share, so less demand for um, more people doing servicing the same market. And so ultimately this results in a lower return of investment. So you kind of have to think about it that if you're getting involved in a business like this, how can you make it actually that you're providing something that nobody else is able to provide, um, which is a barrier of entry. So that can be in terms of your capability, your skill, but it could also be terms of, for example, the equipment you're using. Obviously, if somebody has a $60,000 truck that is able to clean the bin in a minute, well, that's going to be much more high value, I guess, or I, I would think, compared to, say, somebody who takes, say, 20 to 30 minutes per job um, and, and is charging, say, twice the amount amount. So just another thing to consider there. And then of course the other thing that you might want to think about is the actual local regulations for the business. So for example, um, it could be the case that you're not actually allowed to do water blasting directly into the drains. Uh, if you're, for example, taking this waste that's going in the bins and you, you clean it out and then that goes into the stormwater, well then that stormwater technically just goes straight out to sea, to my knowledge. Um, it's not the same as sewerage which gets treated. So uh, if you're doing this a lot, then you might get underneath some sort of scrutiny, which is that um, you may actually need some sort of way of picking up the discharge from the from the dirty bins um, so you might actually need to be able to collect that water and so that's another setup thing that you have to consider and also something that you have to work out how you can how you can resolve that matter 
so that's an additional cost that's uh, additional time to set up and it generally just is requiring more effort then the last thing that I was thinking about uh, as an example is that a uh, one sorry when I say example I mean a consideration is that there is a weather and health consideration as well so if you're doing this sort of side hustle business where you say do some hours in the evening you know in the night cleaning bins and then you do your weekends doing this um, this type of business is quite uh, can take quite a toll on on your body as well and so you've got this idea that you'll be doing your work at, at work and you know your daily work your your normal nine to five job and then you're going to go and do this and so it can wear you out quite a lot quickly than what you think and so your performance in this type of job may not be as great as potentially in other types of um, business ideas so that's one thing but then the weather aspect of it as well is that um, if you go in to do this type of job in say wet weather for example if it's a rainy day and you have to do it on that particular day well then you're exposing yourself to wet weather conditions that can potentially make yourself sick can make you um, unwell and that in turn will result in limited productivity and uh, a limited um, ability to actually make money uh, for, for yourself so just again another consideration in terms of of this type of these types of jobs so with all of this in mind basically my whole point is that uh, it's very easy to kind of get lost in that idea of the upside that can be made from a business without not with without really understanding what is the potential um, steps involved what are the constraints what are the potential risks involved and and what are the things that can potentially cost you more than you expected so simply by taking some time and mapping out the process of a business and you can easily map out say two to three businesses in a day technically if you just spend two to three hours before you go and jump into the car and go and purchase the equipment to do the job but doing this type of thing and mapping out the process potentially will save you a lot of um, capital expenditure and it will ensure that you are capitalizing on the best business ideas um, the ones you understand quite well or have a have a reasonable belief that there is value to be there is money to be made and a reasonable money at that as well so with that I will leave you and I hope you enjoyed this video it's a little bit different from my previous videos but it's kind of revolving around that idea of being productive and ensuring that you're not really wasting your time I think it would be horrible for people to um, for example for you to um, kind of start a business and then it fails and then one month down the line you have to save more money to go and start up another business which fails again and you kind of get into this end never-ending cycle of starting businesses and it failing simply because the research and the work was not done beforehand to identify whether the business was of value or not so keep this in mind and I really really wish you the best of luck for this year hopefully if you're starting a business that you do very well and yeah best of luck. So I'll see you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this one. See ya.